nuclear physics, sometimes you'll be required to balance the equation. Okay, lor. This is a bit AS, right? Don't you think? Balance or complete the equation. But I know, I'm not complaining. It was like a bonus mark to do because I can copy, copy and balance the equation. Okay. So to balance the equation, I need to make sure that I know alpha is 4, 2. So if you don't remember alpha is 4, 2, then this is a goner. Okay. So to find uh, what is the number, the nuclear number here, I will take 211 minus 4, which is 207. Noise. This is a bonus. They don't come very often. Okay. And to balance this, I'll take 84 minus 2, which is 82. Okay. So proton number has to be balanced. 82 plus 2 is 84. The nuclear number have to be balanced. 207 plus 4 is 211. This balancing is kind of important. Each one is B1. If you do chemistry, but for our friends who don't do chemistry but do physics, numbers must balance left and right, like accounting, but for nucleons. All right, so right now, what we have here is how the unstable nuclei is decreasing. So the unstable nuclei is actually becoming less and less because the an unstable nuclei will decay. So as time passes, more and more nucleus will decay and become stable because it will go from polonium to lead. So the pol number of polonium is actually dropping because they are slowly being converted to lead particles. All right. So at t equal to zero, the sample only contains polonium 211. Okay, fair enough. Use the graph to determine the decay constant for polonium 211. Um, give a unit with your answer. So the good news here is the decay constant is given to you in your formula page. Very nice one. Okay, so I'm going to roughly flash the formula page to you because I think sometimes uh, you do a lot of questions, but then you are not familiar with how the formula page look like, especially if this is new syllabus. Lah, okay, so I'm going to just quickly show you the formula page from the sample paper. Okay, so if we check out the formula page, and if you're a parent, you can remember equation. The equation for half-life, they give you, ah, here, decay constant is this. Lambda is 0 0.693 over half-life. T half is half-life. Okay, so I'm going to use it here. So you can, either you remember lambda is ln 2 over half-life or 0 0.693 over half-life. But we need to go and find half-life. What is half-life? Half-life is the time taken for the total to go half, to decrease by half. So what is half of 24? 24 divided by 2 is 12. So 12 is here. Then you do the dot, dot, dot. So basically, I extrapolate, reach this point, and then pull it down here. What do I get now, you guys, here? looks like 0 0.52 to me. Looks like it's 0 0.52 second. So I'm going to plug 0 0.52 in here. 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.52. Okay. So you can put ln 2 also can. You can put 0 0.693 also can. I'll just follow the equation. 0 0.52. So this one is 1.33. Okay. So you can leave your answer in 1 or 2SF, it's up to you. But generally, I see here this is 2SF. So this final answer can be 2 or 3SF, up to you. Okay, so I'm going to put 1.3. What you need, uh, this 0 0.52 is second, right? So if you divide by second, then this unit is second negative 1. Okay, ln 2 has no unit. Lon is just lon, it's a number. It's like pi. Pi has no unit. Lon has no unit. Because lon is exponent, and exponent is a uh, constant. Okay, so lon just lon has no unit. That's all. Okay, so this unit will be second negative one. The right, the side. Two marks. Uh, one mark if you substitute 0 0.52 second. 
and then the other mark is the answer A1. Copy the equation in front if you cannot remember. That's the beauty of nuclear. You can use your answer in B1 to calculate the activity at time t equal to 0 for the sample of polonium. So A is equal to lambda n. Okay? So this activity A uh, we are looking for lambda we have 1.3 you can even put 1.33 if you want and you want n when t equal to 0 this is n naught so when t equal to 0 n naught is 24 times 10 to the power of 12 don't forget to check the axis for prefix when you see it for the paper 24 times 10 to the power of 12 okay so you press your calculator, you will get 3.1 times 10 to the power of 13 back corral. Also pretty important when you do this to make sure all the units is SI, including lambda. Part 3. On figure 9.1, sketch a line to show the variation of the number of lead nuclei in the sample. So this lead ore is the product, it's the stable nucleus, stable nuclei. So let's see, when the experiment first started, there is no stable nuclei, all unstable polonium. So that means this one will be zero. Okay. And then when it decreased by half, it means that the stable nuclei increased by half. So if let's say I have 24 unstable in the beginning, and now I have 12 unstable, that means the missing 12 has become stable. So here to here. Of course, two points a graph does not make. So what you could do is you could just infer. Basically what I'm trying to draw is 24 minus 12 is 12. So right now, we will take 24 minus this. And generally speaking, what I'll do is I will use the graph to help me. This is 4 and 3 boxes. So I will go down 20 to 24, 20 and 3 boxes here. So however much this one is, I go down by the same amount because the total is 24. So if I have uh, 4.4 and 3 boxes left of radioactive nuclei, that means from the maximum, I decrease by 4 and 3 boxes by the same amount. You can see here, minus 12. So you go up here, it's 12. All right, I'm going to rub this because you don't need that now. Hopefully that will make sense. If not, you just slowly plot law. I prefer to do this, lah. it's faster. All right. But then maybe what I'll do is I'll just find another, a few more points where it passes the boxes. For example, um, I know that when it's 20, this one will be two. So I'm going to find points where it is. Okay, this one I like, 16. So 16 is this point this point here, I went down by 4 cm, so which means extending to the same line, I will go up by 4 cm, which is 8. 16 plus 8 makes 24. Okay, so here I go down by 4 cm, here I go up by 4 cm. I think I'm fairly confident, but in case you are not, then we can look for another point here. Oh, I'm just drawing graphs at this point. Um, maybe a nice intersection point would be, I don't know, where, where? Let's try to find, okay, now, this point, 8. Okay, so when this is 8, 24 minus 8 is 16. So it's going to become 16 at the same time. So this same time frame here would be 16. Okay, I got more than enough points already. I'm going to join them together. Hopefully you can see the plot. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And I'm going to use a steady hand, a different color so you can see better. 
please don't use anything but your pencil for your paper, okay? I'm going to sketch out an exponent curve. But you got to make sure that this one is not... Uh, okay, I'm going to adjust it a bit because I'm not very satisfied. So you got to make sure it's smooth and this gradient is not zero because it hasn't plateaued yet. I'm going to try my best to make it smooth. This gradient cannot be zero. So somewhere like this. On the way up. Not zero. Okay, I try my best now. Huh? It will be nicer if I can rotate the paper. Like. Alright. So the mark here is uh, pretty straightforward. As long as you show the trend. If you do chemistry, uh, this is rate of reaction. One side you have reactant, one side you have product. The blue color graph is product. So if you draw an upward curve with decreasing gradient, you get one mark. And you pass through two points. This point and also the last point that I look at, you get the second mark already. All the other, other intermediate point, I waste my own time during the exam to actually plot it out a nice exponential curve for personal satisfaction. Okay, You don't need to do that. Maybe another point should be sufficient. But Cambridge being Cambridge, they are not very consistent with what is required when you sketch this graph. So if you have time, please find more points. Sometimes they want three points. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. Up to the maximum. All right, part C. Each decay, so each alpha particle, uh, release an alpha particle with this much energy. In Joule, calculate in Joule, the total amount of energy given to alpha particles that are emitted between 0 0.3 and 0 0.9 seconds. Okay, so I guess we need to go back and look at the graph, right? 0 0.3 and 0 0.9, so let's see. Oh, I found 0.3 already. 0 0.3 is here. So 0 0.3 is 8. I know, sorry, not 8. I need to read the original graph, not the one that I sketched. 0 0.3 was 16. Okay. And 9, 9 is here, 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 here, this point here, looks like um, 7.2. So the change in N was 16 dropped to 7.2 times 10 to the power of 12. That is how much it decreased. It went from 16 at 0 0.3 second, drop until here, 7.2 at 0 0.9 second. All right, that's the change. So. So to continue the question, we know that the change in the number of nucleus or the change in the number of reaction is equal to 16 minus 7.2 times 10 to the power of 12. So what is 16 minus 7.2? 7.2 Oh, 8.8. .8. My inner Chinese like this number. So 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of 12, polonium decayed, releasing the same amount of alpha particle. You don't have to write this if your brain can understand nuclear reaction. But if you don't do chemistry, writing it once in a while will help your brain a bit. So there's that many polonium decay, so I have the same number of alpha. Okay, so hence, total energy will be, I have 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of 12 alpha particle. Each alpha particle is 6900 kilo evolt, but they want this to be in joule, so I need to convert from evo to joule, I will multiply by the electronic charge. This will give me 9.7 joule. Okay, so this one is the number of alpha 
this is the energy of one alpha and then this one is converting from evot convert to jo if all is well in this line you get a c1 mark meaning you convert correctly you find the number of decay is c1 mark 8.8 .8, or you just show you can just substitute 16 minus 7.2 here if you want to and then your final answer is a1 okay so always think in terms of the reaction every single reaction create one alpha and from 0 0.3 to 0 0.9 second i have 8.8 .8 polonium already decayed i read from the graph one i take the initial minus the final all right finally suggest why the total amount of energy released by the decay process between this time is greater than this amount so i expect 9.7 but then when I measure, it's more than that, meaning the energy doesn't just belong to alpha. So if you think of your, your uh, equation, let me show the equation here. Polonium is plumbum plus alpha. Okay, so polonium, I write here for you, ah. polonium is lead plus alpha. So the energy in alpha was your, what was it again? 6900 kilo evo. So my friend alpha gets 6900 kilo evo. But then I noticed that the total, the energy is greater than this one. The energy that we calculate using 6900 is greater than this. So where do you think the extra energy is from? They want you to explain where is the extra energy from. Okay, so to answer this question, you could say the extra energy is from plumbum or lead. So you can say the lead. This is, I mean, I call it plumbum because I learn, I learn my sciences in Malay, in Malay language. So we call this plumbum. But anyway, they say lead. I call lead. No? So the lead nucleus, the nuclei, could have some kinetic energy. We don't know. Maybe. Maybe the lead have some energy. Or maybe gamma photons could be emitted. No energy released to surrounding stuff. Huh? This one is too too vague already. What means and heat energy released to surrounding? There's always heat energy released to surrounding. That is not good. Okay, so you either sus you either sus that there is Ke in plumbum, or you sus that there is a L gamma at the back, but you can't tell because gamma is zero zero. You write either one can already. It's one mark. All right, so that's it for this nuclear question. It's kind of short and sweet, but it doesn't involve the decay law, your exponential equation. So if you're preparing for exam, make sure you try out equations that involve N is N naught E negative lambda T, or A is A naught E negative lambda T. You can check out questions like that from the channel.